Hey guys, welcome to the workshop. So today I wanted to share with you eight hacks or tips, tricks, whatever you want to call it with using painter's tape. So let's jump right into tip number one. All right, so tip number one is clamping. So if you're putting together like a picture frame or something that's got angles, it can be a little difficult to use regular clamps, but you actually can clamp using the painter's tape. So say this is our picture frame corner and we want to glue that together. It can be a little tricky to put a clamp here because it wants to slide on you. So the way you want to do this is very simple. Take your piece of tape, go a little long, go on one of these, get it nice and solid on there, take your glue, put it on the joint, and keeping this out here like this, put the two ends together, stretch the tape out, and then when you pull it in, that tape is going to naturally pull it to a nice point and also makes it tighter. Now obviously there's still a spring back, so then you want to take tape again. Roll it in on itself, pull that in, clamp it like that. Now if you're doing a complete picture frame, this part with this would be unnecessary because four of these will hold it all nice together. Right there, you let it dry and you've got yourself a glued up place using only painter's tape. Let's move on to tip number two. All right, so tip number two is to simply do a quick and simple zero clearance insert for your bandsaw. If you're unfamiliar with what a zero clearance is, you've got all of these notches and holes that when you're cutting something really small and delicate, it could potentially fall through. So a zero clearance is right up to the blade without any sort of holes at all. So what you want to do is get yourself a piece of wood that you're going to use for sacrificial. Turn it on and cut halfway into it. Now we just turned it off, pop this back off and take the tape and you're going to want to make little loops on itself. And while you're doing that, don't put all of them in the same direction. So in other words, don't put them all like this, crisscross them like this, so that we've got different angles and that's going to help lock this thing down. Don't need a whole lot. I just slip that back on, set it down and push that down and with these tape all being in different directions, it locks it into place. And then you can cut the little piece without any sort of question that something's going to fall down in there. All right, so tip number three is actually probably one of my most common things that I do in the shop, and that is to prevent tear out, uh, particularly with plywood when I cut it. And let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this technique really comes in handy with if you're cutting really thin material and you are using a circular saw. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate to you what it does without the assistance of painter's tape. All right, you can see all that. That's a very unwanted thing. It looks horrible. So now we're going to take our painter's tape and put that on here. Make sure it's nice and secured. And we're going to cut it again, just kind of eyeballing it in the center for this demonstration. Take that off. Now it is looking much better. So just to show you the difference. So there is the difference. Okay, so tip number four, if you've got some epoxy or if you've got some super glue or you got something you're actually wanting to mix two components together, you can use painter's tape as a temporary surface to mix it and then as soon as you're done, roll it up, throw it away. So to demonstrate, you're just gonna take the tape and lay them out in pieces. And it's important to overlap them enough so that it doesn't bleed out onto your surface. Now, remember which one you put down first. It went this way, because when we go to remove this, you're gonna to wanna to remove it from this side, because as you can see, it will just pull all of it up rather than peeling it off. Put your epoxy on there. your mix up and okay then you go and use it wherever you're wanting to put it on okay and then when you're done like I said peel it from the side that you've put down first and then you can toss that 
and it's easy cleaned up all right so another tip which is tip number five is a really popular one and that is pertaining to using it as a depth a gauge on a drill bit when you're drilling down through something that you don't want to go too far into and um, let me show you how that works all right so let's say i want to down, drill down through this piece of wood but i don't want to go down and hit the workbench or go beyond the point so what you only want to do is take a little piece of your tape we're going to use it as a flag go down to where you're too far and back it up a little bit and keep your finger on that drill bit put a piece of tape right where your finger was and kind of create a little flag so when you spin it it's going to be there and then drill down until the flag hits the wood there we go didn't go through didn't go through the bench and another nice little side effect from this is when this gets close enough to it because it's kind of acting as a fan it'll actually knock all the dirt and dust away so you can see pretty quick when you're getting to the hole's depth all right tip number six is to use it as a temporary mark for marking on your board so if you are measuring out stuff and you say you're doing shelves and you're trying to mark stuff but you don't want to mar up the piece of wood that you're working with instead of just marking it directly on the wood Take a piece of tape, and go to where you're, you know you're going to be making a mark. So say I'm making a shelf at seven inches. Take a piece of tape, put it right there. It's a little oversized, and then make your mark on that, and continue on the same. You can also from one end to the other. Now this is a little bit of an excessive amount of tape to be wasted, but if you're making a bunch of marks. Then you can do all your marks on here. So 7 inches, we'll go 14, 18, 22. You know, make your cuts. And then when you're done, all you got to do is take this stuff off. And you're left with a clean board that you don't have to sand marks and pencil marks or even a Sharpie mark. Okay, so tip number 7 is using the thinner style painter's tape to use as something to mark parts. And what I mean by that is... Say for instance, you've got something like this. This is a project that I'm gonna be working on and I'm going to disassemble it. So this is gonna end up being three separate parts, but I wanna know which wing went where in the orientation. Um, sometimes that could be tricky if you're gonna take notes or if you're gonna to wanna to put little tick marks on here. May not look too good in the future. So what I do is use the painter's tape and a Sharpie and I mark them all out. And what I mean is just simply this. So take my little piece here, I'm gonna go with one right across the center. And then uh, a couple more on each part. And I've got two of these wings, so what I would probably do would be one left, one right, and then I'll do one left, one right. And when I take these apart, I know that when I go put them back together, I know that I wanted this one to go in here, this one to go in here. Now, of course, if you're going to be stripping this, taking stuff off, and you can't keep the tape on there, it's also a good idea to keep the piece of tape, throw it back on there once you've done, but just make sure you have these things labeled. This makes for a nice quick job. Then when you're done, you can take them off and you're not left with all of the nasty marks on there. Okay, so before I share with you tip number eight, I wanted to make a quick mention to the shirt that I'm wearing. This is actually one of the shirts that I've designed and it is available on my website. So if you're interested in getting one of these, more than likely it's actually being shown at the bottom of this video and there are links in the description of the video. But tip number eight is actually something that I've already covered in another video. So right now you could click the video playing next to me to watch that one. And it's basically using painter's tape as a form of helping the dust collection on a contractor table saw. Um, more of your nicer table saws have a way of making a zero clearance insert where this wouldn't be a big issue, but for my contractor saw, I have no way of doing it effectively. So painter's tape works really good and I explain how to do it in the video next to me. So thank you for watching this one and I'll see you next time right here in the workshop.